when I say no free speech for fascists, I really do mean fascists. Um, I'm not talking about people on the right. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm not talking about that broad swathe of right-wing opinion, which sometimes people on the left wrongly label as fascist. Um, I'm just talking about really people who are in a very narrow part of the political tradition. So people, a lot of people on the right were distrustful of the book and thought it was an argument for general banning. It's not. It's, argument, it's an argument for saying that if you are going to ban, that banning has to be severely restricted and limited and should only belong to a very small part of the political spectrum. Now that gets me to the substance, why fascists? And it just is, it's a hugely old argument that lots of different people um, at all places on the political spectrum have held since 1945, that fascism was a unique and, and distinctively violent form of politics and therefore different rules applied to it. So that's the broad tradition I'm in. Uh, why do you think it is that so many people, it seems like this is something that's a modern phenomenon, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure if people were doing this in the sort of mid 20th century too, but it seems like so many people are using fascism as a, as was, has been said of democracy, a, a promiscuous term to essentially become a, a chameleon that can apply to anything they don't like. Of course, we've reached something of a consensus uh, at least in uh, public society, that fascism is bad. And so I think people have a vested interest to label things that they just don't like as fascism. Why do you think that this is, has happened? And what is it that you think people are getting wrong when they describe someone who's just right-wing or someone like Donald Trump as a fascist? Well, if you take the Donald Trump example, I think what it captures, and I, maybe I sounded quite dismissive of people who are, after all, my audience, who do make that move, um, Maybe if you sort of pause on the Donald Trump example, I think it's quite an easy way of seeing peop why people want to make that, that argument. One of the things about Donald Trump, it seems to be pretty clearly in retrospect, you know, how on earth are we talking about Donald Trump, Trump in retrospect when, you know, we're coming up to American elections, God knows what the result will be, God knows whether he'll be the next Republican candidate in two years' time. So I'm going to talk about him as a historic figure, knowing that's a slightly odd thing to do. But, but if you look at the last five years of Donald Trump, at one point, he's a fringe candidate for the Republican Party, and that's, by all standards, a centre-right political party. At another point, he's someone who's going online, social media, boosting the internet personalities of some really quite marginal figures. Uh, we can think about Charlottesville, etc. And at another, another point, still, at the end of his term as president, he's seriously considering... Um, using his, his street army with the January insurrection, possibly to force the American people to accept the result of an election, or accept the non-result of an election, accept his preferred outcome, which is he won despite losing. He would, he would win despite having lost the vote. So if you look at Donald Trump seriously, it seems to me, wherever your starting point, whether you're on the left, whether you're on the right, wherever your starting point, Donald Trump is not a stable political category. He's someone who, under the context that we're living through, which is this really febrile moment in world politics, he's someone who's moving in a direction of moving to the right. So when people then look at that and then want to stick the end point as fascism on Donald Trump, I think they're wrong, and I can go through why they're wrong, but I don't think they're totally daft. People are looking to find certainty in words, in times which themselves are moving really fast and disturbing lots and lots of people. So what is or what are the hallmarks of fascism and why is it that someone like Donald Trump doesn't fulfil them? Well, look, for me, really simply, fascism is a form, a counter-revolutionary form of politics which uses violence in order to do certain things. And those things are to wage uh, a war against its political enemies, which it kills, it jails. It doesn't just criticise them. It's not just rude about them. It goes a significant step beyond that. It, it's willing to use violence to kill the people it disagrees with. And those enemies aren't just um, political enemies. You know, all, all political traditions have enemies. But they're also racial enemies. And therefore it crosses a couple of moral lines, which most of the time most people believe is absolutely uncrossable. So that's what's different. And again, maybe just taking it briefly back to Trump, that's also why Trump isn't, wasn't a fascist. Even if at the end of his days he was moving in all sorts of strange directions, at the core of what he was doing, he allowed his political opponents to remain at free even when he was president. He did not, um, you know, he, he said racist things about various ethnic categories of people 
but those people, by and large, do not end up in concentration camps. So again, the comparison is just wrong. It's a prediction. Saying that Donald Trump was or would be a fascist was a prediction about how he'd govern, and he governed in a way which was just much more like ordinary politics than the word suggests. I think people are potentially concerned if someone like Donald Trump is not a fascist that he may exhibit pseudo-fascistic tendencies that give us... I mean, nobody's a fascist at the start, right? Yeah. Mussolini's not a fascist at the start. Exactly. And so do you think there's any credence to this kind of claim? I mean, you you talk about one of the characteristics of fascism being a willingness to have not just political enemies, but ethnic enemies, religious enemies. You can think of Donald Trump talking about a, a complete and total shutdown on Muslims entering the United States until we figure out what the hell is going on or whatever it is he says. This seems to be the kind of thing that would strike that fear into people. And I wonder if you think that is the kind of thing somebody should be looking for if they're on guard against a potential future fascist coming into office. Well, well look, maybe if I start almost at the end of the book in terms of where I'm, I'm saying that for, for movements like anti-fascist movements should end up, um, what I say at the end is that there's certain categories of people who should never um, no platform. So if someone's a... Um, um, a centre-right figure who stands by electoral politics, who um, might use hateful rhetoric to some extent, but clearly has no ambition to turn it into violence against their enemies, then you shouldn't no platform them. And you shouldn't try to silence them. It's just wrong. It's, it's a mistake when people on the left try to do that. I also say that there are um, things which are either fascism um, or moving very close towards fascism. And I say that 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 not in every case, but it's a serious, legitimate argument that you might want to um, remove a platform from them. Um, Plainly, there's some um, middle categories of people between those two groups. Um, My main main argument, if I was, you know, I do have lots of people who um, I try and encourage and influence the United States. My main argument for them against trying to no platform Donald Trump is he's got a much bigger platform than they do. (laughs) So tactically, it's probably going to be a really stupid move. But it's not an argument of principle. If Donald Trump and his movement keeps on radicalising, I could imagine a point to which the boundary between them and fascism might become really quite fine indeed. Um, but I still think that it would be daft for them to go about no platform Donald Trump. It's just think it suggests that people who are even trying to do that have a seriously mistaken notion of their ability to influence hundreds of millions of people compared to his. Did you enjoy that clip? You must have done at least a little bit because you made it to the end. Well, guess what? There's more. You can watch the full video that that clip was taken from by clicking the link that just appeared on your screen. Or click just below it for some assorted Within Reason podcast content. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.